Gossip Nista here, your one and only source into the real lives of New Yorkers and what it's like to live in New York City. So is it all glitz and glamour? Where do you start? What should you know? And who am I? I'll tell you everything you need to know and you'll thank me for it. XOXO, Gossip Nista. Hey everyone, welcome. I'm your host, Mariana Monks, and on today's show, I have food and lifestyle expert Alexa Matthews, who's a creator of a highly popular New York Instagram account called Eating NYC, which serves up some of the best dishes in the city. So I hope you're hungry or not too hungry, but Alexa has been featured on everything from the Wall Street Journal, CNN, InStyle Magazine, Cosmopolitan, Forbes, and so many other outlets, just to name a few. She's an expert in her field, and she's with me today to share her New York story with us, as well as let us know some of her favorite places to eat in the city. So here is my interview with Alexa. Hi, Alexa. How are you? I'm so happy to have you on my show today. Thank you for being here. Hi, Mariana. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. Oh, no. I'm the one that's excited. We're talking about some of my favorite things today, and that is food and New York. And of course, sharing your story, Alexa. Why don't we start there by telling the listeners if you're from New York or if you moved to New York, what is your New York story? Yes, I'm originally from New York. I actually grew up in Manhattan. Um, and I have mm-hmm. lived here my whole life. So I grew up um, in Midtown and then in, on the Upper East Side. And now I'm actually in NoHo. Got it. Moving to the West Village. So I've been all around the city. So a true born and bred New York City girl. That's like music to my ears, Alexa, and literally in the smack middle and heart of New York City. Yeah. Well, then let's talk about that. How was it like growing up a native New Yorker and like you mentioned, a New York City girl? Um, I really, really loved it. Um, you know, loved going to school here. I loved growing up here. I think, you know, some people say you grow up a little bit quicker mm-hmm. and I definitely right. think that's true, um, but in a good way. I mean, I have really great friends and you know, my family's close by and um, I love everything about it. I think, honestly, at this point, if I were to go anywhere else, I would be super bored. Definitely boring anywhere else that's not New York, I can attest. But have you actually lived anywhere outside of New York before? Um, yeah, so for three years from the ages of like two to five, I lived on Long Island. So not really. But then for college, I went um, mm-hmm. to Hartford, Connecticut. So um brief briefly out of new york other than that no all right still the east coast but not the city and so in general what would you say you like and dislike about new york city wow okay what do i like i like the i mean it's not even that i like it i'm just so accustomed to it it's the accessibility like you can do anything go anywhere experience anything at any time and everything Mm -hmm. is at your fingertips and you can really you know, make the city your own and just feel, you know, make your, build your own community, of course. build your own identity. You could just really do anything and there are no limits. Um, I think what I don't love, I would say the number one thing is probably like, I don't know how to put this into words, but the lack of feeling of community, you know, it's yeah. you meet a stranger and have a nice friendly conversation or you smile at someone on the street absolutely um but those are like kind of few and far between yeah everyone kind of rushing to their next place and being in a hurry I wish their people were friendlier and you would smile on the street a little more but I completely hear you on this and if we could also just get off our phones whether we're from here or not we're always stuck to our phones exactly and I mean I'm to blame too I'm always on my phone walking and you know (laughs) but that's actually your job you're on social media you make a living from that which we'll get to that a little later but so you know I guess my final question related to New York in this segment is what advice would you give to someone who is new to New York City 
Um, I would say, you know, really network and, and make as many friends as possible. Um, you know, I think it's totally. really hard for people who come to New York for the first time. Maybe they don't know a lot of people and it definitely, I'm sure, can feel like a really lonely place and it's easy to kind of get lost. And right. I think it's really important to put yourself out there and make friends and network and, you know, people always come back always like you never know that is such valuable information coming from a new yorker like yourself make connections talk to new people don't be shy actually on that end alexa i'd love to ask are new yorkers approachable like how does one go about networking here um i think especially you know in the setting if you're going Mm -hmm. to a bar or your coworkers. Um, any kind of like social setting, I think it's all about the mind, your mindset and the energy you're putting out there. Oh my gosh. I love that you just said that. Yes, it is all mindset and that is all anyone needs for advice. Absolutely love it. All right, Alexa, I love to now transition into your business, which is called Eating NYC. You guys can find her at that handle on Instagram. She's got more than a quarter of a million followers. But first, Alexa, I would like to know, what did you actually major in? I started out as an economics major, so I thought I wanted to work in finance. Wait, what? That is such a huge difference from what you do today. Yeah, then kind of towards the end of college, I realized that that wasn't really what I wanted to do. And I created a major called Writing Culture and Media Studies. And at that point, I knew I wanted to do something kind of in the realm of journalism or media. Um, And I got my first Mm -hmm. job as a freelance writer um, for a lifestyle website, Guest of a Guest. Um, And there I started writing about restaurants um, and really fell in love with the restaurant scene in New York. And at that time, started eating just as a hobby is now like six years ago, Um, kind of picked up from there. And then I um, worked in hospitality, I worked at a PR agency, I worked in-house for a restaurant group. Um, while growing the account and then Mm. years ago I decided to start doing Eating NYC full-time. You just shared so much Alexa you pretty much unpacked your whole story and where to start with this recap okay so you mentioned you went to school for economics did not love that and you realized that towards the end and changed your major actually created one and from there you know one of your first jobs was with a place called Guest by Guest which I'm assuming has to be restaurant related you were writer and so you did that and developed this passion for food at the same time and also developed eating nyc to kind of complement what you were doing and from there everything has just kind of evolved and blown up ever since you mentioned three years ago you quit uh just regular jobs to fully manage eating nyc and i guess so my question is had you ever thought you'd go into this industry did you have a passion for food where you're a foodie definitely say you know Living in New York City, there, you know, people are always on like the top of the trends when it comes to restaurants and dining. And I was definitely always someone that got very, very excited about food. And so it's definitely something I was passionate about. It was just the right timing, kind of the right place and really turning it into a career. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. You optimize off of that. And I guess so my question, the next one is what was your inspiration behind creating Eating NYC? Was it because you were part of this hospitality group and the restaurant industry or was there something else? Yeah, so I just, you know, it was right when Instagram was becoming really popular um, and people were starting to, you know, post about restaurants and the where they were eating. And I, you know, started posting some food pictures on my personal account and then I was like I should really just start a food account um, since I'm writing about all these restaurants and um, you know I want to complement the work that I'm doing and use the photos for the articles I'm writing and it just kind of was a way to complement work Um, of course not knowing that it was monetizable in any way at all Um, so it all kind of just Mm -hmm super organically oh yeah for sure it was all organic back then but you did mention a couple things I would like to point out and that is one that you essentially came across a new platform that you were willing to try and that was Instagram so you did and two you found your niche within it pretty quickly and that's food you you stuck with it that's also a key factor and third it was all organic 
growth, although you unknowingly did not know that it happened. But so and now you're here today. That's not really that possible with Instagram anymore. You have to try a new platform. And I would suggest to anyone listening here, TikTok, it's where it's at right now. Yeah. But aside from that, Alexa, I'd love to know when did you start feeling, you know, this is actually something like I could monetize off of this and leave my job. Um, it was definitely like a slow, like kind of path. I was, mm-hmm. you know, when I went to work um, at a PR agency was when like the whole influencer kind of word started buzzing around and it's still, you know, it was clear that I was able to advertise it, but it wasn't clear that it was, um, you know, really a career and kind of became mm-hmm. evident once I was seeing that I was able to make more money out you know, doing my Instagram than at my full time salary job. Yeah, um, that was kind of like a big sign to me that I was like, okay, like this is really um, looking promising, and I really have something here. So um, the signs were kind of there for themselves. Um, it was just a matter of like me taking the leap of faith and you know, going ahead and doing that. Yes, it's always taking that leap of faith, which is so scary. And when you stare fear in the eyes and just go for it, it always turns out a lot better than you think it will. And look at you. Seriously, you're one of the biggest influencers in food in New York City. And from starting an Instagram account in 2014 to being able to quit your actual, you know, nine to five in 2017 and do this full time, you're getting advertising deals, travel you know, people reaching out to you, this is like a dream come true for many. But as much as I'd like to probe more into all this, I want to pick your brain regarding all the knowledge you have in food in New York City. And that's finding out where should people go eat? Where are the good date spots? What are the top places you recommend? Gossip Nista here. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. I wanted to drop in here to mention Alexa's website, eating.nyc, which is a wonderful resource for food recommendations in the city at any time. You can search by price range, location, cuisine, and read more about her, plus even shop for fun merchandise if you're a food lover. As always, I ask that you please subscribe, rate, and review the Gossip Nista podcast wherever you listen. And I thank you so much for listening. Now back to the show. All right, Alexa. So let's dive into these date spot tips. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready. The first tip I'd love to hear from you is where's a great first date spot restaurant in New York? Um, I would say Bond Street. Most people I know who go on a first date end up going there for whatever reason. I personally love it um, really? just to go with, you know, for any occasion, but it's a really good date spot. The lounge downstairs is really nice and a little more intimate. The food is great. It's definitely a spot to go if you're looking to impress someone. Mm. Um, and you can really get a reservation pretty last minute, um, especially on a weeknight. Cool. So you said Bond Street, B O N D. Bond Street. Perfect. Yeah. And that's located in, in Manhattan? Yeah, that's um it's in NoHo on Bond okay. Street. Yeah. On your na- in your neighborhood. So yeah. that's that's yeah. awesome. Very close to me. Okay, cool. Next question. Most romantic date spot in the city? I would say Lartuzzi. It's an Italian restaurant in the West mm. Village. Super charming. Mm. Um very unpretentious, but high-end impeccable service all the time wow Um, the food is really great lartuzzi an italian restaurant in west village and and what do you have a favorite meal there or a recommendation my favorite dish there would be the bucatini it's like a spicy bucatini Mm. it's really really good oh i love anything spicy so i'm with you okay awesome thank you Okay, next question is best rooftop date spot. Um, so I would say the Broken Shaker at the Freehand Hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a rooftop bar, amazing views and sunsets in the summer. They have wow. fun drinks, really good vibes. They have a great burger, um, mm-hmm. snack food. Just okay. all around a really good spot and in a pretty good location too. Okay, so you recommend the burgers there. That That's kind of just... Yeah, easy. they have a good burger. Yeah, easy and good. 
Perfect. The next one is brunch spot for a weekend date. Best brunch spot. Well, if you can get a reservation, I would say Sadell's. It's kind of like the most luxurious bagel brunch you could have in New York. Wow. Um, like a smoke fish tower. You can get any kind of smoke fish. They have amazing French toast, matzo ball soup, blintzes, great salads. Kind of like everything I would want in a brunch, but in a really mm-hmm. fun setting. Definitely hard to get a reservation though, so you would have to book that date in advance. Wow. Why is it so hard? Is it a new spa? I mean, is it just um, always... It's been around for a while, I would say like maybe three years now, but it's just really popular and kind of nowhere where you can get like sit down and get like a fancy bagel. Um, I guess mm-hmm. Lots and Daughters would be like a close second, but um, mm-hmm. just not that many places like it. Surprisingly, okay. we live in like the home of bagels, but yes. I love that you're recommending a place that has the finest bagels for brunch. I'm sorry, right. what did you say was your was your favorite bagel there? Oh, I, I like their um salt and pepper bagel, actually. I'm usually an everything mm-hmm. bagel girl, mm-hmm. and I do love everything bagel, but their salt and pepper bagel is amazing. Really? Okay, awesome. I have to try that spot. Okay, next uh, question is best cocktail date spot in the city? The Rose Room, the Rose Bar, I think that's what it's called, at the Grand uh-huh. Park Hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually went there for the first time mm-hmm. um, and really liked it. And it made me realize that my husband and I don't go out for drinks alone. Oh, uh-huh. You know, because I feel like all my single friends, they go out on the first date and like it's often for drinks. Uh-huh. Um, and if I'm going out, I'm going to like a bar bar, not like an intimate kind of date spot lounge and I went yeah yeah and I loved it it was like super chic and mature um Mm -hmm. and dark and cozy and they had great drinks Mm -hmm. um and I was really impressed with it I was like wow this is actually so nice um so I would definitely recommend that spot if you're looking to take a girl out for some nice drinks awesome that sounds tasty and intimate like you said I like that thank you (laughs) um next is uh Best happy hour in the city. Do you go to happy hour? Do you not? I mean, I'm not a big happy hour person, but my one of my favorite sushi places actually um, called Domo Domo. It's like a hand roll place, um, and they have. I just passed by and they had a sign that it said like happy hour drinks like till late at night, six dollar hand rolls. Um, I think the beer and drinks are like seven or eight dollars, and their food is like amazing. So any excuse to go there, plus it being discounted, would be be great. So, um, Domo Domo in in um, Soho, if you haven't been there. Domo Domo, okay, that's awesome. That's like a two for one. You get sushi at a good price, yeah, and like drinks and sake. I mean, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. All right. You said you have a sweet tooth and I'm going to test you on this one. Um, Best dessert date spot in the city. Um, Dessert date spot. First place that comes to mind Mm -hmm. is Spot Dessert Bar. It's literally Mm -hmm. a sit down restaurant that only serves dessert. So what? So that's kind of answering your question quite literally. Um, (laughs) I mean, I just love dessert. So if you're looking for an ice cream Mm -hmm. place, tell me what neighborhood you're in and I will tell you where to go um well while you're there let's let's tell us what's your favorite ice cream in the city oh um my favorite ice cream place is um I really love Amble Hills um but my Mm -hmm. favorite is Cafe Pana they open um in I want to say August around Mm -hmm. um Irving Place and they have amazing amazing quality gelato um, gelato mm-hmm. ice cream. It's like Italian ice cream, and they have homemade panna, which is the Italian word for whipped cream. And they mm-hmm. get the milk from Italy, and what? all the ingredients are just so amazing. Oh um, my gosh, it's really good. Yeah, like I ordered a sundae and ate it myself completely. Whoa. Okay, <laughs> well, we, I definitely need that in my life right yeah, now. Good. Too. Okay. Noted. Extra whipped cream. I love yeah. whipped cream. All right. Um, thank you for that. Now, the uh, next question is um, a good double date spot for some someone, for a group. I mean, the first thing when someone says, you know, double date, I'm thinking, okay, someone in there probably has some um, dining restrictions. Um, so you know, 
go somewhere that has like a lot of options. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you think what comes to mind that's like good, friendly? Um, I really like La Malo. It's a Mediterranean restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, in Nomad, they have like a lot of dips and um, a lot of vegetarian options, meat, chicken. Oh, cool. Um, and it's like, you know, fairly low key. It's good if you're going on like a first or second date. Or a group date. That sounds perfect. Yeah, a group date. Exactly that. Because it has a mixture of a lot of things for people to order different things. Exactly. So. And good for sharing. A lot of dishes that are good for sharing as well. Great. Okay. Um, next question. Best cafe date, date spot. Best cafe date spot. I really like Maman. They have a few mm-hmm. locations. Um, their biggest one, I believe, is in Tribeca, and it's really cute inside and pretty. And they cool, it's great because it's like kind of like a fancy coffee shop, and you can get a coffee, you can get a cookie, you kind of can go in any direction, I guess, depending on um, mm-hmm. how much you like your date. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh my gosh. I love that. That's perfect. Okay. So it's like you get the option of a, it's actually a cafe, but you can make it more than just coffee. coffee so. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. You're giving us so many good stuff. Okay. Thank you. Now, um, next one is not so much specific, but is the best new thing to try in the city? Um, for dish, I want to say that, um, Rice rolls are having a moment. Um, they actually okay. are my favorite kind of dim sum since forever. Like a shrimp mm-hmm. rice roll is my favorite thing ever. Um, mm-hmm. And they're kind of just having a moment. This place from Flushing called Joe Steam Rice Roll opened in New York City last year. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There's another new specific rice roll place um, that I'm definitely not pronouncing right, but it's called Yin He Cha Feng in Chinatown. Okay. And mm-hmm. they specialize in rice rolls. And I think um, it's just really having a moment. And if you haven't had mm-hmm. them yet, then I highly recommend. Okay. And restaurant, must try new spot in the city? I would say it just opened, but it's um, Stephen Starr's new restaurant called Veronica. Uh, Eastern European mm-hmm. food. And it's super fancy and definitely great for a, mm-hmm. a date or a meal with the parents or a special occasion an absolutely stunning restaurant um, on 22nd and Park Avenue. Mm-hmm. If I were to put my money on it, I would say it's going to be one of the best restaurants of the year to open for sure. Wow, that's exciting. And that's some good in- insight from you as well. Yeah. I must try that. Yeah. Now, I want to ask this question because I, I know you've gone to, to a couple places and it's not one I had on my list, but where is the best date spot for a michelin restaurant um marea it's been around for a while i think it has one star um it's near columbus circle it's italian food with like a very seafood heavy menu um mm-hmm. it's kind of like a quintessential new york restaurant at this point it's been around mm-hmm. forever um mm-hmm. and it's just really good and it's it's definitely feels more accessible than some of the others like per se or Bernadine. Um, mm, more, a more more approachable menu I would say mm. um, and I think it's really great and um, last question regarding this and thank you so much for all the insight you've given us regarding amazing places to try in the city this one is um, what's the best unique place that someone might not know about that's outside of the box date spot I would say Ha Salon. Um, it's a newer restaurant um, from mm-hmm. Israel, and the re- the restaurateurs have a ton of um, great restaurants around the world, actually. And Ha Salon mm-hmm. comes from Tel Aviv, and it's a really, mm-hmm. really fun dining experience. They have um, two seatings, one at 6.30 and one at 8.30. And if you go for the oh. late one, it turns into a basically a club at 1030 and a huge dance wow. party. So if you're looking for somewhere fun and not your typical dining experience, I would definitely put that on the top of the list. I've been a few times since they opened and it's yeah. always a great, great time. Oh my goodness. I want to go eat and dance now that we're talking about this. Okay. So wait, yeah. how do you say it? How do you say it? And, and um, it's H-A space S-A-L-O-N. 
Um, mm-hmm. Also a great spot for a birthday. I had my birthday there this year too. Really, really oh, perfect. Fun. Okay, perfect. So they do different, um, you know, uh, seating arrangement hours and, and the last one is going to get you into, is this every day is going to get you into like a dance party? Um, well, they're only open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I believe. Oh, okay. So then that makes sense. (laughs) Perfect days. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So that concludes, you know, tips for great date spots in NYC guys. All right. So, um, before we end, Alexa, I, I want to do this little game, and um, it's it's a fast round, and I call it a New York Minute, where I'm going to just ask you a couple of questions about New York, and you can just say whatever pops into your head first within 60 seconds, so it needs to be under a minute. Are, are, you, are you down for that? <sighs> Let me take a deep breath. All right, I'm ready. Okay, I started it, and here we go. Okay, first question, favorite New York food? Pizza. Favorite neighborhood in New York? West Village. Favorite season in the city? Spring. Favorite tourist destination in New York? Central Park. Favorite non-tourist destination in New York? I have to get back to you on that (laughs) Okay. Favorite New York subway line? This, ooh, the FM. FM, okay. One word to describe New York? Hectic. A tip for making it in the city? Hustle. Perfect. (laughs) You got it. I mean, you got it. Okay, but well, let's go back to the favorite non-tourist destination in New York. Is there somewhere that, you, like, say you and your husband go to that, like, it's not? No, like, I want to say Chinatown because I always think that's really fun, but that also happens to be super mm-hmm. touristy. Um, that's true. That's true. Okay, so then there's not a non-tourist place in New York that you could go to, in other words. Yeah, they're kind of everywhere. You can't escape them. <laughs> I love it. I love that you said that. Okay. Um, So Alexa, I appreciate everything you've given us today and sharing your story with us. You are amazing. I love everything you share. The food is delicious. Your knowledge is to the roof. Um, Please tell the audience where they can connect with you and continue getting recommendations from you. Um, yeah, of course. You can follow me on Instagram at EatingNYC. My website is eating.nyc. Um, mm-hmm. You can find me on TikTok too at EatingNYC. Yes. Um, and yeah, that's really, that's where I'm at. Perfect. Again, thank you so much for your time, Alexa. I appreciate it. And looking forward to sharing this with everyone. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in to Gossip Nista. Your support means the world. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and share this podcast with your friends. Can't wait till next week's episode? Follow along on Instagram at Gossip Nista to get my latest New York happenings. But if you live and breathe New York City like I do and want even more, go to our website at GossipNista.com, explore, and subscribe to our newsletter to get insider tips first. Lastly, if you have any questions and or scoop on the city, you can email me at gossipnista at gmail.com. Until next time, you know you love me. XOXO, Gossip Nista.